Hey, Foot Clan, what a game that was last night. If you're ready for week two and you want to make sure that all the start sick questions you have and all the tools you need to be able to research everything to win in fantasy football, you want to go to jointhefoot.com, sign up, be part of the Foot Clan, and get access to every premium in season tool we have. Check it out, jointhefoot.com. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! BJ, <laughs> it's Beckham time. Hey, he's back oh. doing things. Woo, <laughs> woo, woo! Welcome in Friday, September eighteenth. The fantasy footballers alive and well. <laughs> Andy, Mike, and Jason at the FF Ballers on Twitter. All right, gentlemen. Uh. I had somebody write me on Twitter. They said, some flags don't need to be planted. And yet there I was. <laughs> had planted the flag on Odell Beckham Jr. One quarter of football in the books. <laughs> Never a moment of doubt, boys. Never a moment yeah, of doubt. Yeah, I, we'd look, I can confirm that. In the company slack, we can absolutely confirm no one was freaking out about the goose <laughs> I think he had no targets. That is correct. In the first quarter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kareem Hunt didn't have anything in that first quarter. Those were two players that I played in league of record, no points. Yet, here we are. They what were your, what were your very, thoughts? They had a very good game, both. And by they, I mean everybody. Everybody not named Jarvis Landry had a great game. Baker looked great oh, on the Beckham. brown side of the ball. Well, I, I would say that. Well, sure, people AJ would not Green. say AJ Green or Joe Mixon had a great game. I was too bothered by Burrow. I can't think of – I mean, he just looks excellent. I think he will be a superstar. I mean, I'm talking like Super Bowls in Cincinnati. Wow. That's how I feel about Joe really? Burrow. Really? Yeah, really. I was certainly impressed. Second straight week, Joe Burrow looking great. Zach Taylor. I mean, everything that I hoped about this offense so far – maybe minus a few extra receptions by A.J. Green, is looking to come true. I mean, you have a, a great trust that Zach Taylor already has in Joe Burrow to extend plays, drive the ball down the field, and um, they're 0-2. <laughs> yeah. But but we, we I think we all know that Joe Burrow looks like the real deal. I will tell you, the what got me hot and bothered was the fourth and four. When they went for it on a fourth and four early on in the yeah. game, I was like, oh! This is what I am talking about. Pay attention, NFL coaches, of the momentum swing that that produced at the moment. I look, I get it. The Bengals ended up losing, but that you had to go for it there, and it, it look. That's what we need to do. But back to Odell Beckham because this this is the main storyline here. Baker Mayfield only threw the ball twenty three times. Odell Beckham came through with a very big game. Four for 74 with a touchdown. Baker and Odell, if you didn't watch the game, just missed on what would have been a, a second gigantic touchdown. So six total targets for Odell Beckham in that limited amount of passing work for Baker Mayfield. And uh, the the flag planting on Odell Beckham by Andy, it was bold because this was not like a, a cake matchup cornerback-wise for Odell Beckham. Like he, he had a good player. Like they they've got decent DBs and if what Odell Beckham was going to face, so this was very very encouraging that we saw uh, we saw Beckham still being used. We saw an incredible route uh, on the touchdown where where Odell Beckham like and we got a little bit nervous, you know, <laughs> that he went down early, but we still got the touchdown. This is exactly the confidence boost that Baker Mayfield needed. Prime time. Everybody seeing it, you were the number one pick, and you had been trashed for over an entire season. This is what a, this is what a human being needs to get their confidence back, get their uh, uh, get the swag back. Well, let me ask you this: I, I was asked this question on local radio this morning, and it was 
it made me stop and I, I didn't know my answer. But with Odell Beckham's one good game now, which was great, what are you doing in fantasy? Are you selling? Are you buying? Right. Or are you holding? I, I, I thought about this a little bit last night with the fact that it came together. Obviously not a, a high amount of passes. Look, I, if you downloaded the uh, Cleveland Browns video game made by Kevin Stefanski, this was the tutorial. Last night's game plan, the the passing attempts that Mike just mentioned, the running. I, Kareem Hunt, two touchdowns. Nick Chubb, two touchdowns. Running in the entire second half, all of Beckham's damage was mostly in the first half. Um, I had to think about that, Jay. I had to think about, you know, do you go and try to cash in on this primetime performance? Because he did this in week two last year. 89-yard touchdown in primetime week two. If you had gotten rid of Odell at the time, it would have been a better situation. Um, but you expect higher passing volume if they're not, you know, out ahead like they were in this game. I think I'm a hold. I'm not, I'm not actively trying to shop him. Um, I'm not actively trying to go acquire him, but yep. I think I'm a whole. If he's on my team, I'm willing to listen. If if somebody else is like, oh, I'm 100% back in on Od Odell Beckham, then I'm, yeah, I'll listen to trade talks, but I'm not actively out there saying, hey, you got, everyone in the league, you saw what Odell Beckham did, he's back, and then trying to intentionally trade him. But this was the Minnesota formula. Yes. Dalvin Cook uh, shouldered most of the touches for Minnesota, and then Stephon Diggs, who, if I recall right, was the leader in deep touchdowns last year. Like that, that, That's what Stefanski wants to do. But to your point there, Diggs, as you've brought up many times, was very hot and cold. Not a consistent sure. good fantasy option, even though at the end of the year he finishes as a, a, a high-end wide receiver too. It was not helpful through the season. I think there's so much to talk about in this game. I mean, the, the other piece of my dual start of the week did not come through. A.J. Green. 13 targets for A.J. Green. The opportunity did. Three catches. He had, you know, a, a, a whole assortment of ups and downs in this game. He had his own drops. He was overthrown by Burrow. He had, I think, four drives. It might have been three where he had an end zone target on each drive that didn't end up with a touchdown. He had the sideline catch that he made that didn't count as a reception. Some. and Look, I feel like I'm a little bit biased here. So what I want to do is put the ball on the tee for both of you to analyze what you saw on film. I'm encouraged by the targets. You've got Joe Burrow, 46 pass attempts. They're probably going to be in negative game scripts all year, and he was the number one target. That being said, a lot of reaction from people saying, oh, he looks washed. He doesn't look as fast. He made a mistake here. The, you know, he's done. I don't think he's done, but he doesn't look the same as he used to. There were a couple throws that, you know, was a little behind him, or he'd have to bring something in with, with – with, a little bit of difficulty where you used to always see him catch those balls. He wasn't. Now, th that could just be as simple as rust. He, he hadn't played since the middle of 2018. This is his second game back. So maybe he shakes off that rust. But what I see in A.J. Brown is that he's going AJ to— A.J. Green. A yes, A.J. Green, is that he's going to be a heavily involved number one target. But while I love Burrow and I just you know waxed philosophical and, and loved him— um, I believe you said Super Bowl title this year. Super Bowls, not this year. In no, the I know. Super I know. Bowls. But the Oof. the point is he's still a rookie. So I I don't think A.J. Green has the chance to be a top 15 wide are receiver. Are you trying to – you uh, same question you asked about Beckham to you. Are you, are you holding A.J.? Are you trading for A.J.? Or are you trading him away? Well, I, would, I, I can't hold him because I would never have drafted him. Um, <laughs> but if, if I had A.J. – Green, I would probably wait until a big game and then shop him. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would hold him right now. You don't. You don't trade a guy after a down game. Well, and you're holding him because when you drafted AJ Green, he's your what wide receiver four. Who can he can just chill out on your bench and see if the rust does come off. All right, we have to talk about one more player from this game because I don't want people to think I'm ignoring it. Um, Nick Chubb, he's real good. That, there you go. <laughs> no, but I mean, you can talk about Kareem Hunt and what his prospects are. Kareem he, Hunt, he's real good. He may be the uh, he may get the whole fourth quarter this year. You know, in their in these games, but Joe Mixon, yeah, Joe Mixon. Um, you know, I think when I looked at this game, he he failed on a goal line carry that would have you know people asking, what do I do with Joe Mixon now? Uh, he had like nine first half fantasy points. Gave away a number of third-down touches to Gio Bernard. 
Um, like I said, didn't get into the end zone. The game script coming from behind. You saw a little bit too much Geo out there for my liking. I thought Mixon looked good on his touches, but the, their offensive line didn't really do much. And I liked the four catches, but we didn't see huge fantasy production. So let me ask you guys, are you – concerned about Joe Mixon what is he rest of season to you yeah I mean he was one of the guys I was a little concerned with uh, of those top upper tier running backs coming in and this was kind of the concern that the Bengals offense would they be able to have him be as good as he was the second half of last year on a consistent basis Mixon's gonna have great games he didn't look bad you didn't you don't watch a film and say man he looks slow or he he he's still you know, it's kind of similar to Kenyon Drake in, in week one. When you watch Kenyon Drake, you go, oh, he still looks really good. But you were a little concerned that Chase Edmonds was on the field, had the touchdown opportunities. So I, I see him as a running back two, but a high-end running back two at this point. Would you go try to get him, Mike? Uh, I would be open to it. And and I've been kind of the most pessimistic on Joe Mixon during the offseason. I didn't know what to make of him, which kind of turned my take into, yeah, like, yeah, if if he falls into my lamp, okay, but I'm not going to actively go out and spend you know a high second round pick on him. That's just wasn't my strategy. I'm encouraged that the offense can move the ball. Yes, it, like he'll get his opportunities, and so if if uh, whoever drafted Joe Mixon, if they want to bail out, I'd be interested. Look, he's a starting running back who's getting touches. Final question: Would you rather have Joe Mixon or Aaron Jones at this point going forward? Aaron Jones, me as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Probably. It's tough. It's only two weeks. Yeah. Let's I mean, see what happens. Not this even week two weeks for Aaron Day. Jones. I mean, yeah. it, here's and the r reminder: we were here last year. We were actually much further into the season, and people saying, "Okay, is it? Do I finally drop Joe Mixon?" And then they were able to figure things out. Let's see if uh, if the laser we can had, figure things out. We had somebody from our league say that if Nick Chubb doesn't deliver last night, he's on the block. I mean, that's how quick it moves. Yeah. So it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, every Friday we do a giveaway from pristineauction.com, a weekly giveaway from uh, – we pick somebody from the supporters over at jointhefoot.com. Today's winner, Roto Yoda. Oh, Roto Yoda. Roto Yoda. That's fun to say. <laughs> Roto, Francisco. Roto Yoda. <laughs> Roto won Yoda. DJ, a DJ Moore signed jersey. So congratulations. Oof. We'll get that out to you. You can sign up at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS for $10 off your first item. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, let's talk injuries because that's fun. A.J. Brown has been diagnosed with a bone bruise in his knee. He will be sidelined possibly beyond week two against the Jaguars. And uh, Mike, yesterday or on Monday, yeah, you had your stream of the week as Ryan Tannehill. Without A.J. Brown, are you concerned? Uh, concerned the matchup is still decent against Jacksonville, and we at least saw you know, Corey Davis uh, pulled his best undertaker sit-up gif and like returned, showed that he can get it done. with it. So... If you're locked in with Tannehill, I'm not like, oh, no, I need to eject and grab, like, you know, Tyrod off the waiver wire. I'm not doing that. With Corey Davis and Jonu, there's enough that can get done. Wait, let me ask you this. Would you prefer Tannehill without A.J. Brown or Matthew Stafford without <laughs> Kenny Galladay against Green Bay? That is a fabulous question. <laughs> uh and they are currently sitting back to back. In let's my throw rankings. Drew. Let's throw Drew Brees with Al Michael Thomas in there too. Man, uh, I would of those. I'm going to take Drew Brees, but okay. I don't think Drew Brees is on your waiver wire. Fair enough. So then, what did you say, Stafford or Tannehill? I have Stafford one click ahead of Tannehill right now. All right, Jason. What's the latest on Michael Thomas? Because this high ankle sprain, even on the broadcast last night, the Thursday night game, they put up some of the injuries on the on the screen. And it says Michael Thomas out multiple weeks. That's what they wrote on the screen. Yeah. He, well, originally. <laughs> Thomas, you will be out multiple weeks. We have told you. Yeah. Originally, he was going to play through it. It was minor. And then it was serious. He was going to be out multiple weeks. Uh, now, Michael Thomas said he felt fantastic at practice on Thursday. So there is a little glimmer of hope. I do think. It's such a lie. He, don't feel he's going to miss this week. And I think I'll play the week after. 
I, man, I'm not calling for a guaranteed miss this week, but I will say this. If he plays this week, I am willing, if I've got a, a, a good option, I'm willing to bench Michael Thomas, which is a hard thing to do. The number one wide receiver in everybody's draft. Monday night. Oh, gross. Yeah, oh, he's, Thomas is a bench for me. Yeah, you have to bench him not, at that point because dancing. unless you have both him and Emmanuel Sanders, that's the only way I can imagine that you could. I want that sound bite for the future. I want Jason's, <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that is, that is unfortunate. Um, that is a Monday night game. So, yeah, prepare and pivot ahead of time because he will be limited. He, it's just, he's still a human being. Right. And when the, you know, sometimes we look at these superstars and we think, well, they're injured, but they're so good, they'll just play through it. And the reality is, he's not at a hundred percent. Okay, Chris Godwin in or out this week? I'm preparing that he's going to be out he, with the concussion. We'll see, though. He did return to practice uh, in some regard today, so he's trending towards being in. I I lean in. George Kittle in or out? I'm I've been saying out. Uh, and I think he'll miss this week. Yeah, out. Jamison Crowder? Don't missed, really care. He missed Thursday's <laughs> practice. Uh, he's certainly going to be out of my lineup. You don't care a, because of the San Francisco matchup and the injury? And Yeah. You're, hopefully you don't have to play Crowder. Yeah, desperation, PPR, baseline play. How do you feel about the report, Mike, that the injury happened in practice, not during that long run? It, that's do you, fine. Do you buy um, it? I, well... <laughs> It may have gotten worse ah, in the practice. Go. There you go. Hey, uh, lots of other players. Um, what we have now is the Injury Blitz podcast produced uh, by Matthew Betts, our injury expert. After the Friday practice reports, which we're recording this before them, um, the Injury Blitz hits jointhefoot.com for the Foot Clan Premier members and gives you a little extra insight into any of these injury-related decisions. So we encourage you to check that out. It's on to the Week 2 matchups. Fantasy Forecast. All right. Yesterday we handled – we got through a lot of them yesterday, Brooks. Yes, we did. Eight games. So uh, if you don't hear it today, guess where it was? Yesterday. Yesterday. The Denver Broncos take on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. The Steelers' heavy favorite, seven and a half points, a 40.5 over under. That does not afford – Many points to the Denver Broncos in this one. Um, they punted on almost half of their drives last week, and they did not play the Steelers last week. The Steelers one of the best defensive lines in the game, best defenses overall. Um, this could be ugly. This could be an ugly one. Yeah, th this game is rough because you have a lot of big-name, big-time fantasy players here. On the Denver side of the ball, if you want to chase the volume with Melvin Gordon, it's okay to me, but he is a low end to look Melvin Gordon and I have we have a very checkered past, but I think that the two of you guys can <laughs> <It's> so true. <laughs> I think that the two of you can agree with me when I state uh, as a matter of scientific fact, Saquon Barkley is a better running back in the NFL than Melvin Gordon. Yes. The Steelers completely shut down Saquon Barkley and the Giants on the ground. Now, will Melvin Gordon get enough targets to overcome? It's possible because Saquon salvaged his day sort of in, in PPR leagues. And Melvin Gordon should see a, a ton of volume. Phil Lindsay's dealing with this minor turf toe, whatever it is. Uh, I'm not expecting him to play, and I don't expect Royce Freeman to get as many touches or looks as Phil Lindsay was scheduled to have so, Jason, how confident are you plugging Melvin Gordon in as a running back, too, or are you downgrading him to, like, flex? Yeah, I mean, you said it well. He is a volume player. You're chasing volume. He's going to end up with 15-plus touches in this game. That's my belief. I agree. It's a very difficult matchup. 16-and-a-half implied points for the Broncos says not a lot of scoring that happens, but they are going to score. They're going to score some points. Maybe. And it's just as likely Melvin Gordon falls in the end zone as it is that Noah Fant gets in the end zone. I, I don't love any Bronco in this matchup. But, yeah, as a, as a low-end RB2, I think you can play Melvin Gordon this week. James Conner's practicing in full. Benny Snell had the big week last week. Some talk about him deserving you know, more of an opportunity. 
I mean, if you compare I, Gordon yeah. to James Conner. I would rather play Melvin Gordon than either James Conner or Benny Snell. I agree with that. I, I shake my head of the Steeler. I'm, man, I don't know if you have an option because of where you had to draft James Conner. But if you have any any type of option here, like Naheem Hines, if you were, Look, if you scooped him up, I the just did wire, this. I just did this. I went with Kareem Hunt on Thursday night. Perfect. Instead of, right. I didn't want to mess with this situation with James yep. Conner and Benny Snell. Yeah, give it, try and give it a week if you can. That's a putting if, James Conner in your lineup this week is that is a hero play. I, if I had to choose one though, I would put James Conner in I agree. over Benny Snell with the passing down work. Benny Snell saw none of that last week. All right, we know Lindsey's not likely to be out there. Juju is in your lineup. Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson, uh, an opportunity, I think, in this game to make a mark. He had 10 targets last week. Yeah, he's my taking it up to 100 player this week, I, I believe, with the targets um, and, and the possible offensive line injuries. Big Ben wanting to get the ball out quick this week. Deontay Johnson is a flex play for me. Agreed. If you don't have a better option, he, I expect him to be fantasy relevant this week. All right, Noah Fant had a great week one. Do you look at Noah Fant uh, this week? Can you just put him in your lineup? Jason's making a grimacing face. I get why. I'm grimacing because, you know, in, in our main dynasty league, I have to decide between uh, Hayden Hurst, who disappointed week one, Noah Fant, who was great, but in this matchup against such a good defense, it's really hard to want to throw Noah Fant in my lineup. Uh, who would you take out of those two players? I would play Hayden Hurst. Yeah, I think it's going to take one big play. Fant could get one big play in this game, no doubt. Is Cortland Sutton playing? Does that I make the difference? I think Cortland it makes Sutton, a big difference. I think he me. does play this week. Yeah, it, if Cortland Sutton is out, I'm very happy to play Noah Fant with you know just wheels up. If Sutton is in, he will be limited. So it's that's more of a like yeah, this defense. How many opportunities is Fant going to get? But I he's he's probably still in. But Hurst. Hurst is playing. He's in it's that the, Cowboys it's that huge matchup. Cowboy game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why I went with him. Oof, I'm I'm riding that rocket. The Carolina Panthers take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are heavy favorites. Nine and a half points at home. A 48 point over under. You know, you look at Week One in Tampa. You know, they lost to the Saints, but that's a tough matchup. Saw some good, some bad. Not vintage Brady, but a lot of people are expecting a huge bounce back this week against the Carolina Panthers and that defense that, you know, that they're the, in the bottom five. The Carolina Panthers are expecting a huge bounce back week from Tom Brady. <laughs> they are. They are. Um, but Carolina competed last week. They had a chance against Las Vegas. Um, how do you see this one breaking down? Are you Were you impressed with the Tampa Bay defense in week one? Yeah. I mean, they picked off from where they, they – they were even better, I thought, from just watching film – than what you saw at the end of the previous season. The beginning of the season, the, the Buccaneers were a terrible defense that, that was you know someone you wanted to hyper-focus on and, and target. But uh, now I, I think this is just a solid overall team, which leads me to believe that they're going to run the ball a lot in this game. They're going to be able to have success on the ground. The Carolina Panthers have allowed 30 rushing touchdowns since week one of last year, and their defense has gotten much worse than it was last season. They have basically half of them are rookies out there, and uh, you, you can run all of them. That's why Ronald Jones was your start of the week. Mm -hmm. Mike, I, I, I like it. I'm questioning whether I can even throw Leonard Fournette in my dynasty lineup as well. Do you think you can? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Peyton Barber? <laughs> Yeah, I'd play Peyton Barber over Leonard Fournette. Um, I am concerned with uh, – well, let's let's talk at the wide receiver position on Tampa first, and then I'll talk about the other side. But uh, Mike Evans, we expect him back in there? Yeah, the, the report is he's, quote, back – he's over the hump of the hamstring injury, whatever that means. But, yeah, I'm playing – I'm playing Mike Evans against the Panthers. Scotty Miller was my taking it to 100 player. I think he's going to have a great opportunity this week if Chris Godwin misses, even if even if he doesn't. Yeah, Thanks. even if he doesn't miss, I think Scotty Miller has a great opportunity against the secondary Panthers. Uh, they're vulnerable. I am concerned about DJ Moore in this game. 
I'm concerned about having the bounce back week. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, Tampa was very impressive to me. Their secondary in week one. You saw what happened to Michael Thomas. It wasn't the injury that slowed Michael Thomas. And opposing wide receivers in week one scored 15 fantasy points in the win for New Orleans. I'm concerned about being able to count on DJ Moore as anything more than a wide receiver three this week. I, yeah, I agree. I don't know that he'll be shadowed or, or, or if he's not as clear-cut a one as Michael Thomas was, but Michael Thomas was shut down in, in week one. This was before the injury, so I, I agree with you. DJ Moore is not someone that I'm uh, expecting a big breakout from this week, but he is still the primary receiver of these three. Uh, I'm just not in love with any of them, but I was impressed, and I think it's worth – noting that from week one, I was impressed with the Carolina Panthers offense as a whole. So I don't expect them uh, to n not be able to score at all. There will be fantasy points here, but it's hard to rely on. You know, when you've got three wide receivers that it could be, it's just low odds when you roll the dice. And so I would just start Christian McCaffrey. If DJ Moore isn't the top producer at the wide receiver position this week, are you going to see panic from fantasy football players? Absolutely you will, and I will – target DJ Moore in trades to acquire him if he has a down week this week it's interesting because we're just establishing you know what this offense is with Teddy Bridgewater with Christian McCaffrey not being heavily targeted in week one there's there's a lot to unpack and another week of data would be good mm -hmm. um, anybody else from this game I mean Gronkowski you're not thinking about Gronkowski are you no no if you're looking for a touchdown Maybe, but then I'd you rather, look to OJ Howard. I would play OJ Howard. Yeah. All right. The Washington football team. Look at this. Look at this disrespect. I'm staring at our show doc. I have I have Washington football team zero and one at Arizona Cardinals zero and one. Unbelievable. These are two undefeated teams. Unbelievable. Brooks, how could how could we let this slip through the cracks? These two juggernaut I, division yeah. leaders. I, I see I what you're doing, Brooks. I can't even believe that one of these teams has to lose. They are they, they haven't lost all season. Right. And now just by math, unless a tie happens, one of them has to come out as a shocking <laughs> uh you know, loser in this game. All right. The Cardinals are seven point favorites. It's a forty six point forty six and a half point over under. It's in Arizona. Implied point total twenty six point eight for Arizona, nineteen point eight for Washington. Um you you look at the defensive line in Washington, it was so impressive in week one. Eight sacks against a beat up offensive line for Philadelphia. Kyler was sacked forty eight times last year. There is going to be an opportunity for that defensive line to to cause some havoc for Kyler. Um Pace of play in this game based on week one is going to be super fast. This is going to be fast. Washington ran 70 plays the year before in the uh, Adrian Peterson offense. They were dead last. So this was a huge change for Washington. More opportunities. It means more fantasy production, whether it's Antonio Gibson or Terry McLaurin, anybody. And that's both teams playing fast, which means a lot of fantasy points, uh, elongated clock, because there's going to be a lot of passing uh, opportunity. I, I, you know, if if you like taking over unders based on pace of play, you would take the over in this game, uh, which is which is good news for fantasy. I you know we we've had a lot of discussion through the off season through week one on Antonio Gibson, and I think the consensus is wait and see. I this is a matchup to me that I kind of want to have him out there. He was a player two away from having a good game last week, and and while we have pointed out that the 32nd rank against the run against Arizona is kind of hollow, one broken play. It is worth noting that there was an electrically fast running back that caused a broken play, and they gave up a long touchdown. So to say that that could happen again for Gibson, I see him as a flex option. You know, I, don't I think, think you persuaded me in that I, argument. Yes! <laughs> because I... Because nice! Look, they, they're going to give snaps to Peyton Barber for a period of time in this game, but the game script, the, the Vegas line... The situation now, Mike. I mean, the, there's always the chance they get down on the goal line, and it's Barber for another one. But I, the the game script tells me that Gibson's going to be out there more than he was last week. He was only out there for 26 percent of snaps. It was a very close game um, over the second half of the game, and they had the goal line opportunity. It didn't happen from 10 yards out when he scored. I, I think you can flex Antonio Gibson. <sighs> and I didn't think that before you spoke. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, the, the play, and it was a receiving play. That's not going to be Peyton Barber. 
Like Barbara reminds me, I don't know if you guys have heard this. This is an old adage from uh, Arizona native Ron Wolfley. Oh, oh the, 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 the dirty car- bird. <laughs> the, one of the Cardinals announcers, but he has his uh, go-to because he was a fullback in the league, and he would say, Coach, if you need two yards, I'll give you two yards. Coach, if you need four yards, I'll give you two yards. <laughs> like that's that's Peyton Barber. Yeah. Yeah. Stop true. giving the ball to Peyton Barber. Well, look, most of the time when, when you're two yards away from the end zone, Mike. I, you only need two. You only need, and he was effective and they won. Well, and he, I'm sorry. You might have to wait a week or two. I I, I agree. I I'm I'm very happy to be the not the one who's who's walking the Gibson line right now. Like that that there's more people on board, but uh, if yeah, you, hopefully it's this week. If you do play Peyton Barber and you're chasing the two touchdowns from last week, you are oh, no. you are banking on a touchdown. Oh, so no. he is a touchdown dependent play. Kenyon Drake. Yeah. We, we have the question here: Is he an RB one rest of season? I love this question. I mean, he's played one game against San Francisco, so I think that Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds will both be involved. Drake will be the one. Is he a one rest of season? I think he's always been right on the fringe. I, I love this question because, you know, the the question of am I still confident in what I believed about Kenyon Drake? I am 100% confident in what I believed, and nothing that I saw in week one led me to believe that he won't be a running back one this season. Um, you know, I, will he be a top three absolute breakout superstar? No, but that's not where you drafted him. You didn't draft him in the top three. You drafted him at the back of the first or the, the top of the second. And I think he's going to to warrant that. Even in last week when you had Chase Edmonds end up with one of those goal line carries that succeeded, he still had a good line. And when you watched the game and you watched the film, his talent looked special. You know, they, they still needed to pick up the first down at the end of that game with the San Francisco 49ers selling out to stop that run. And he just beat them. Uh, he, he looked good in the game. So I'm, I'm still 100% in on Kenya Drake. All right, Terry McLaurin. In this game, it could be a tough matchup. Patrick Peterson, McLaurin kind of the only target on the outside. The number one start-sit question on the website right now is DJ Chark at Tennessee <laughs> or Terry McLaurin. Oh, which are, This is a Mike special. That's number one because that is a very difficult question. I mean, they – because both of these players – oh, I am being uh, looked at. You have the floor. <laughs> I feel like I'm this- – I mean, I'm the prettiest a, boy in the school right now. You are the prettiest boy at the table like, right now. Uh, because Terry McLaurin and DJ Chark, to me, are their weekly plays. So that's uh, that's an unfortunate situation if you're having to decide which one you go with. I would go with – I think I'd go with Terry McLaurin if I have to choose between one of these two. Logan Thomas, a sneaky snart? Yep. Okay. H- Thomas or Herndon against San Francisco? I <laughs> – Man, if you did not see it, I, I don't remember if we're talking about the Jets today or not. If you did not see Mike Greenberg, oh, just bring out a blowtorch number two to number two today on air. It was just oh, it filled me with like like I don't want to disparage a man, but it's like number two. <laughs> but uh, apparently, it was a quote like from the owner of the Jets saying that Adam Gase has a incredible offensive mind and then to see the national media just point out every single thing we've talked about that said if Adam Gaze doesn't have Peyton Manning Hall of Fame Peyton Manning on his team his offense stink and then and then everyone who escapes Adam Gaze then they become really good I would have been such a good offensive coordinator with (laughs) Peyton Manning I really would have succeeded genuinely you would have yeah it's like the Ken Wisenhunt with Kurt Warner years Wisenhunt rode those coattails to other, you know, offensive coordinator jobs for years. Here's Adam Gaze riding Peyton Manning's coattails. To look, watch the video. Mike and I both retweeted it. it it's it's, r- it's ridiculous because it breaks down like 20 metrics that Adam Gaze is like basement dwelling with. Yeah, because the the Peyton Manning strategy is. How do we get to Adam Gaze in the middle of a Washington uh, Arizona breakdown? Because <laughs> uh, you, you said Herndon. Oh, okay. Uh, but the the Peyton Manning strategy is you're on the sideline. Peyton, what do you what are you seeing out there? What do what you? We think we should do, and then Peyton Manning does it. You're like, ah, oh, sweet, I'll just sit here. He probably told Peyton to do something different, and Peyton just changed it. The line, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gaze honestly. tried to run his offense, and he probably <laughs> thought those plays were his. He probably thought those were his plays. 
Adam Gase, you've done it again. That one looked a little different than I drew it up, but I'm a brilliant man. <laughs> so, yeah, I it, 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 uh, is a, it is a criticism based in the reality of what happens on the field. That's really what it is. But anyways, uh, Logan Thomas versus Chris Herndon, look, they, they both had decent volume, and until the Arizona Cardinals prove that they have improved against the tight end, I'm still going to target that matchup. So I would play Logan Thomas over Herndon. All right, Hopkins is in your lineup. That's why we're not talking about him. That You should play him. He's good. But you probably aren't starting anybody else in Arizona. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe Kirk, but outside Prob of Drake and Kyler. Correct. Yes. Kyler's uh, at QB7 receiver. on the week. Kenyon Drake's at RB14 on the week. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to uh, – it's a wait and see on, on Kirk. I'm probably not going to start Fitzgerald the entire season. And, you know, the Dan Arnold the Dan Arnold breakout is obviously – it's coming. It's it, it's. In oh, the postman always delivers. Yeah, I mean it's in route w according to my app. Oh, yeah, um, we, the tracking. Yeah, yeah, I got the notification. I just don't know when it's going to arrive. All right. Well, maybe this week. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs take on the Los Angeles Chargers. Chiefs are eight and a half point road favorites. It's a forty-seven and a half oh, point over under. This now reminds me of one of my uh, takeaways from last night's game. You see how good Baker. And the Cleveland Browns looked against the Bengals. Yeah. You know who couldn't move the ball against the Cincinnati Bengals? Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor and the Los Angeles Chargers. This is uh, – I have abandoned ship. I, got, I mean, I'm starting Austin Eckler, but this is, this is not a good situation. Look, I will give you a personal choice that I am having to make. I have Keenan Allen right now sitting in my flex. Yeah, you, in you our talked about record. this yesterday. And I grabbed Scotty Miller mm. off of the waiver wire because I'm with Andy. Like, I think Scotty Miller is a good play regardless of Godwin playing. It is a great play if Godwin you know, unfortunately misses the game. And I'm sitting here going, one week in, do I put Keenan Allen on my bench to play Scotty freaking Ugh. Miller? And I... I'm leaning that I do. What, what's your guys' take on that? My what? only take is that the pass attempts, I mean, it was 16 completions for Tyrod Taylor last week. The chance of them getting boat raced and being playing a second half of garbage time, it seems somewhat high in this one. So I would I, – the, the only – that would be the negotiation I'd be having mentally with the Scotty Miller play because I don't want to get beat with a huge Keenan Allen game on my bench, and then if the second half of this game ends up being – Dink and dunk. Allen can do that. Percentage chance that, that Justin Herbert is in the football game in the second half of this game? Zero. Ten. Hmm. I, would, but it, I, I would put it at non-zero. Yeah, non-zero, but it's it's very low. I, I do agree, and I think this is the important fantasy takeaway for this game that is 5%. different from, what we, <laughs> from, what, okay, that's from what we saw last week is what Andy just brought up. They will be down in this game. I realize that the Chargers have a great defense, um, but – they're not. I mean, greatness versus greatness. Pat Mahomes wins, and I expect the Chargers to be down in this game. So certain things we saw Week One won't be able to happen. They won't be able to play as slow. They won't be able to run the ball as much in the second half. Uh, Joshua Kelly, someone that I would really like to flex. He's he's in that consideration with my Leonard Fournette and Peyton Barber awful situation for the running back. Justin too. Jackson has been missing practice. I think he's not going to play. Yeah. I, I agree. They they actually signed another running back. So oh, yeah. I, Justin Jackson is, is not going to play. And Joshua Kelly looked good, but I don't think this is the week for him because when you're down, it's going to be Austin Eckler. The goal line opportunities, I, I don't see being there like they were against the Bengals. So to that point, I think I would go Keenan Allen here. I think there will be more passing volume. He had eight targets last week, which granted turned into 37 yards. But – the second half, I, I I lean Keenan here. Well, would you play him over Mike Williams, who had a bigger week last week? So my rankings right now have Keenan ahead of Mike Williams, and it seems dumb. It seems dumb because these targets, I I don't rely on Tyrod Taylor targets, so I want whatever targets to come to be high value. Keenan's weren't high value. Mike Williams are. They're down the field. He only needs two or three receptions to have a, a decent fantasy game, uh, I think I need to adjust those rankings and have them pretty much next to each other, user choice. In a, in a full PPR league, I would go Keenan. Outside of that, I'd probably go Mike Williams. I mean, Mike Williams had more targets. One more, but 
is still more. It's a, it's tough because you, you can look at the Chargers side of the ball and say, well, I, I want to play Eckler, and then maybe Allen and Williams are okay, but then I have Hunter Henry as my start of the week at tight end, who I think benefits. And all four of these players, is not they're not having a good week this week. Hunter Henry is the the best option for the respective position out of all of these plays. The last, you know, the last while that we've seen the Kansas City Chiefs, last year they were top five against wide receiver and fantasy points given up. They looked good this first week as well, um, even against Deshaun Watson. So I, I think where you can beat the Chiefs is at tight end. I love the Hunter Henry start of the week. Tyreek Hill's in your lineup. Patrick Mahomes is in your lineup. Clyde edwards Delaire is in your lineup. Sammy Watkins, what do you think? He's not in mine. He's not in mine either. <laughs> He's not. What if you had to choose between a Charger option and Sammy Watkins? I mean, I would choose the Charger option, but. Well, I, I, I will put this question that was asked to me this morning. It was, again, to bring back Scotty Miller, who is still available. I would rather play Scotty Miller over Sammy, which I guess means I would play the Chargers over Sammy. Okay. Mike, you don't want to weigh in. It, no, I because uh, I agree. Okay, the Baltimore Ravens take on the Houston Texans. The Baltimore Ravens are seven-point road favorites. It's a 50-point over-under, and it is. Andy's almost upset of the week. Generally speaking, you can convince me and, like, <laughs> sway me on these arguments, but I am taking – the points, I, like I'm taking Baltimore to cover the spread. They may double the spread. Ditto. <laughs> yeah, I, I see the floor. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, go, you guys can both <laughs> stare at me. I'm not going to compel you with my arguments. Houston didn't look very impressive in Week One. This is what Houston does. Houston disappears. Go look at the consistency charts for Deshaun Watson. Go look at what happens after a loss. Go look at the way that this team can look atrocious, and then you say, wait a minute. Wow, one big defensive play from J.J. Watt and then one big touchdown pass from to Watson. To DeAndre Hop. Oh, no. I, I get it. <laughs> look, it is not logical to say that Houston's going to compete in this game. Vegas doesn't believe it. The eyeballs don't believe it from week one. But it is my almost upset pick of the week. All right. I think at home, after the loss, Houston will be more competitive than people expect. Find me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they will indeed. They always do. We we have the quote here from Texas coach Bill O'Brien on the challenge of facing <laughs> Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. Quote, it didn't go so well for us last year. Accurate. It doesn't go well for many. <laughs> that is true. As a reminder, uh, not so well. Uh, the Houston Texans scored seven points and the Baltimore Ravens scored 14. No, I'm dyslexic. 41. <laughs> Uh, so it did not go so well oh, for them no, last year. No, it did not. Year. Good luck. Give me them points. <laughs> Take them. Take them. This will be a true victory lap situation. I mean, shirt off, running. I yeah. told everyone. Yeah, or, or they lose by 50. I don't know. Um, Deshaun Watson, though, a lot of people having to decide whether they play Watson in this game or they go with somebody like Cam Newton that they drafted late in mm. their drafts or they pick up someone like Phillip Rivers off the waiver wire who was you know, our start of the week, my start of the week. Or Aaron Rodgers chasing that week one. You drafted oh, yes. Watson to be your starter, but here you are facing Baltimore. I can confidently say I would play Cam Newton and Aaron Rodgers over Watson. Phillip Rivers is a little bit you know, borderline. I, the, the matchup is incredible for P. River, but Watson, when it comes to fantasy, just because of Watson, because of the cheat code being able to run if he hits 50 yards on the ground, then uh, it's fine. Cheat code was uh, oh, the garbage man can. <laughs> there's that side of it too. Last week, Watson, that's that's how he got it done for fantasy. Sure. So, okay. So with your confidence in the Texans to at least cover the spread, because they will almost upset the Baltimore Ravens. That's right. Where, where are you with the fantasy options for Houston? Like, I mean, I mean, David Johnson. I'll is, play Watson, Fuller, and Johnson. Okay. Yeah. The rest can. Sit on the old bench. Skedaddle. Bench. Skedaddle out of here. Uh, but, I, you know, Will Fuller, people want to decide Will Fuller or Hollywood Brown in this game. I assume oh. you guys are going the Hollywood side. Hollywood Brown. Fuller will probably get more targets, but uh, Brown might do more with them. Yep. Lamar Jackson's in your lineup. Ingram, Dobbins, there's been a lot of discussion about 
what's going to happen in this Baltimore backfield? One of the storylines heading into week three could be a panic situation in the Baltimore backfield. If you drafted Mark Ingram, now you didn't pay up for him. He was not demanding right. the kind of draft capital that you might have expected after the year he had. But I think he has an opportunity. Jason said he thought he's a top 20 back this week, would fall into the end zone. I think that could happen too. Mike, you have Marquise Brown as your start of the week. Yeah, for Mark Ingram, it's not full panic yet, but I will say my I, my thumb's on the ejection button. So we'll give him another week. I do think that this team will, even if it wasn't a great Ingram week this week, I think this team is most certainly not going to turn – the backfield over to a single option. I, I agree with so, that. So Ingram could then be a disruptor of the rest of the year, if not an I, option. I, com I completely agree. This will never be one man's backfield uh, outside of two injuries, you know, causing that. It, it will be split. But because of that, and because that's how it was last year as well, I am actually fine playing J.K. Dobbins. I, 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 can, I don't feel that that's any riskier than playing Antonio Gibson. He is a talented, speedy back who can break 50 up. 50-point over, under, favored. Exactly. There's, there's, he's going to have opportunity to score, and that's good enough for me if I'm looking at a flex option. I think he is uh, fantasy relevant this week. I told myself after the stress of OBJ delivering last night, <laughs> why do I do these things? And here I am defending Bill O'Brien. Yeah. The, the Patriots. They take on the Seattle Seahawks Sunday night football. This one's oh, going to be wild. Yes, must watch. Seahawks are four-point favorites. It's a 44-and-a-half point over under. Russell Wilson completed 31 passes in week one. Only did that one time in 2019. The hopes of a cooking Russell Wilson. Look, we're at least simmering. We're simmering. Uh, the Patriots are four-point underdogs. Amazing stat here. We had one last week. Let's give you another. 64 straight regular season games that the Patriots have been favored. That is the longest streak ever in the Super Bowl era, and it comes to an end. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. and I think, I mean, I, I agree with it. I think Seattle's a better team, and they're at home. So, I'm, I'm with Vegas on the line here. But prime time, Bill Belichick, Cam Newton, it's going to be fun. Mike has been, uh, he, oh, he's yeah. all about... Give me that booty, mm. Scooty. You seem, uh, you seem max hype on Cam Newton. I'm, look, There's man, a, I'm back. I'm back in. Are you back, Jason? Because I don't feel, I feel like Mike's just the. I'm going to pull everybody has pushed with us me. all out of the room. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I look, I've, I've been a long time uh fan of cam newton for fantasy i do like him but i'm not all the way into the degree mike is to the to the previous question of deshaun watson aaron Rodgers, cam newton i didn't chime in but to me it would be aaron Rodgers, deshaun watson cam newton so it, it, still a, a decent option i like this game uh i i do think i mean man i i believe that the seattle offense is going to be something to behold this year i know it's too early to really definitively say that after one week but I mean Gordon Ramsay was back there just doing work they're letting him cook and uh I I was trying to follow that yeah, yeah. R Russell Wilson could be the number one quarterback on the season this well year. this is the litmus test though I mean this is a great defense and they were great in week one uh New England didn't have Russell Wilson on the other side of the ball yeah, by any was, means yeah but they they you know I watched that some of that game and they looked like last year's defense so um we'll see if they can pressure Russell Wilson We'll see if they can slow this, um, you know, Russell Wilson train down head, uh, going into week number three. Sonny Michelle? No. James White? No. Probably not. Rex Burkhead? No. J.J. No. Taylor? No. There's no running that, back that's not named Cam Newton for the Patriots that I'm playing. Yeah. I mean, he will lead the team in, in rushing pretty much every week of this season. Michelle White and Burkhead all had 19 snaps. It's not a backfield that you want to mess around with. Um, it's just a gamble that you don't want to take. Uh, Chris Carson, you can definitely play him. Uh, he did play only 45% of snaps last week, only had six carries. He had the two touchdowns that might have masked a lower volume performance from him. Um, you can play him. I'm not expecting big things from Chris Carson this week. I think he's an RB2. Yeah, that's fair. The, the six receptions, though, that was where – that's where Chris Carson. That's the that like, was great. Like, if Chris Carson can actually get 
more involved in the passing game, he's going to be great. Yeah, the odds are on him over Carlos Hyde in that role. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Julian Edelman, do you do you take your shot with Julian Edelman this week? Um, Marquise Blair gave up 114 yards to Russell Gage last week. Yeah, I I do. Uh, this is a matchup where I think if I'm taking a uh, you know a skill position player here for the Patriots, it's it's going to be Julian Edelman. Uh, I'm not really willing to put, put Nikhil Harry in my lineup yet. I want to see a little bit more. And like we said, no running backs. So to me, the Patriots side of the ball is pretty easy. Even though I like the matchup, I think the Patriots will have to score and keep up. And I think they'll cover their 20-point projected stat line. The only two pieces I'm really confident in are Cam Newton and Julian Edelman. Yeah, I think I think Harry is interesting this week, just with the way the game script may go. I think he may have a... He had an okay week one, and if he gets in the end zone there, he's a breakout in week one. You know, that's the line. Right. Um, Metcalf, Lockett, you play them both. We had in our league of record a trade that took place before the season where somebody exchanged a, like a, what equated to like a second, third-round pick plus DK Metcalf and got uh, Chris Godwin. And we said, wow, you know, this is a blowout win for the Godwin uh, player, and yet here we are. With Metcalf having the huge week one, Godwin may be banged up and hurt. Do you buy the Metcalf full-on breakout, you know, the Julio Jones comparisons? No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I think he's going to be great. And like I said, if they let Bobby Flay do his work back there oh my behind gosh. center, we're going, then, we're going uh, down the whole <laughs> rabbit Jason, hole here. I rapidly need three more Celebrity Chef references. Hit me. Emerald Lagasse. Uh, Anthony Bourdain and oh, who's the spiky white haired guy? Oh, oh Guy oh. Fieri. Guy Fieri. There okay. It is. Okay. Right. I'm a chef. So Jason Moore is is Guy Fieri a chef? I think yes. At, he's at not just point, the hype man. At one point he was a chef, but now he's just Flavor Town man. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, and shout out to Alton Brand, who's my actual favorite. Oh, oh, is he? I do love those him. old school. Uh, yeah, this, science of cooking. I yeah. like it. Okay. Anyways, speaking you are way of Russell, too quick on those. That was better than any <laughs> you name in any backfield. Yeah. Speaking of Russell Wilson, I I um I do like DK Metcalf a lot. Obviously, I love Tyler Lockett. I think both guys are just going to be great this year. But the DK Metcalf, Julio Jones type breakout. He's just. I don't believe he's going to take over the one dominant role in this offense because it's not best for the team and. They have Tyler Lockett there, so this that's what I believe, and we'll we'll see. I, would, I look at them pretty much the same. Yeah, a, a 1A, 1B, and I yeah. like both of them, but I still give the A to Tyler Lockett. Breaking news. So afraid once again. Mm, that what felt happened? good. What happened? Uh, that felt good. Jameson Crowder is out. I wouldn't play him. Yeah. Uh, Chris, look, Chris Herndon does – He will be the most targeted tight end this week. He becomes – Interesting. He, but you could be talking about a line that is nine receptions for forty-one 40 yards. Something yeah, yards. yeah, totally. Yep, totally. All right, Monday Night Football. The Saints take on the Raiders. Saints are five-point road favorites. It's a forty-nine and a half point over under, and uh, this will be an interesting game, especially as the Raiders uh, they get to break out the new digs. Allegiant Stadium, game one there, the Death Star. As, is it as John Gruden? We drove past that. That's John right. Gruden uh, really, really wants it to be called the Death Star. Okay, he can he gets what he wants sometimes. Michael Thomas might miss this game. Um, they're uh, the Saints are favored in games where the Saints were favored. They were thirtieth in pace of play. The Raiders were thirty first. Could this game slow down a little bit? Could we get a little less value than this forty nine and a half point over under? With Josh Jacobs, no Michael Thomas, a beat up uh, wide receiver core. Yeah, it, it that would not surprise me at all. I would, I would probably take the under here. I mean, because on the Raiders side of the ball, Henry Ruggs was looking like he was going to be the breakout, everything that they wanted from the first round pick. But let's let's see. I mean, he wasn't practicing yesterday. He had to leave the, the week one with an injury. So I I don't even know what the health status of Henry Ruggs is right now and like Brian Edwards even though he was on the field more than any other wide receiver I think he had one target couldn't get any attention from Derek Carr so where if if all the Raiders are rolling out are Jacobs and Darren Waller that's not going to be enough to keep pace with the Saints and I would expect to see that slowdown happen 
I think Ruggs will be out there for what it's worth, and he's probably somebody that you could, in a pinch, flex him. Gruden came out and was really impressed with him, not only on the performance but in the fact that he played through injury. Um, but Waller would be a better play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> goo, 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 goo. Do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. The, the, they're going to need to throw the ball. And I here's what I'm excited to find out, right? If they are down and they are in – catch up mode which I expect by the fourth quarter that's going to happen is it Josh Jacobs out there is he the one you know we we saw him more involved sure. in the passing game that's a good which question was great but that was kind of in a neutral game script I want to know in a game script where you're losing and you've got to go quick and you're running essentially a two-minute offense possibly for a quarter will that be where Jacobs is now as a chef what exactly is catch up mode Ketchup mode is what goes on a hot dog after mustard mode because mustard mode comes <laughs> mustard mode first. first? Yes. And do you go? Are you a relish mode? Yeah, only if you also have the finely chopped onions. Uh, ketchup mustard relish onions is pinnacle. Okay, and that's four different modes. That's four different modes. It's a kind of a chef mode. There, you've got to. Do we have know anybody that doesn't go ketchup mode on the hot dog? Because some people, that's sacrilege. Mike's putting his hand. I, up. I wouldn't say it's sacrilege, but I'm. Uh, I am a. a Enigma. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I used to be naked hot dog. I just want. Really? I want the That's bun. That's weird, bro. And I want the hot dog. That's all I wanted. But over the uh, the quarantine period, I had to express to Jason that something happened with my taste buds. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the quarantine, but I have. I am fully engaged on team mustard. I put yeah, baby. Mustard is on everything I eat so now. So good. And so now. This is like a win for Jason. <laughs> zero calories. So, well, not when I put the the mayonnaise on there, too. Oh, gross. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you go. Mayo mustard. So you went. Delicious. To be clear, you were naked hot dog up until the quarantine? That is correct. Wow. That is. I mean, che cheese. Your, your food cheese takes. Fine. Uh, they leave me shocked yeah, year after year, Mike. I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, producers, any any naked hot dogs back there? No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> all right. I don't have a panic alarm <laughs> on my thing, so this is what you get. Oh, all right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets funnier the more I sit With in it. All right. all right, all right, there it is. Thank you. Was that Al Borland doing it? Oh yes. gosh. All right. Um. All right, Jared Cook, he plays football. He should be in your lineup. Yes. Um, <laughs> there you go. We've got another segment to get to. Hold on. We did, we did Jason's have a, getting sweaty. We, we, <laughs> why why the English accent? <laughs> what is happening here? You, Jason's glasses are fogging oh. up. Uh, we do have an update <laughs> uh, for fantasy football. Oh, do we? Not related to how one dresses their hot dogs. Uh Buccaneers wide receiver Chris Godwin <laughs> did return to practice this morning. Well, that's huge. Yeah, so that would put him on track to clear concussion protocol and play. You still need to pay attention and watch what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, generally you wouldn't see them back <laughs> on the field unless he's passed something, right? So that's good. We have another segment that we have to get to right now. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right. It's week number two. That means our second prop it like it's hot. Prop it like it's hot. Segment. Um, our favorite week two props over at Monkey Knife Fight. So much fun to uh, play the more or less game over there. And we were all looking through some of the matchups. And there it, are different lines. Yeah, go ahead, it's, Jay. It's so easy as well because literally if, you, you can go to games where it pays out a hundred times, but the simplest thing to do, go to your game, the, the game that, you know, is your hometown team that you're watching. And if you go to that game, they'll give you two players and you pick, you know, more or less on yards or fantasy points or what, you know, whatever, right. whatever you want. And then if you get both of those, right, you get paid out two and a half times. And then you have that skin in the game. It makes the, the game a lot of fun. I'll lead off with mine. Yeah. By the way, if you want to play, Go to ballerspicks.com and use the code BALLERS, and you get a 100% deposit match. Yeah, up, up to, to $50. $50. Yeah. So definitely, yes, ballerspicks.com, use the code BALLERS. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Do it with us. M my pick for more or less this week is Dak Prescott. Uh, he has a more or less line of 299 and a half passing yards. This is 
you know, that bonanza game. This is the 53-point over-under. This is the Atlanta-Dallas. The, the passing yards are going to be flowing. And Dak averaged last season more than 300 passing yards per game. And now he's playing in the highest over-under of the week against the Falcons who just got, you know, lit up by Russell Wilson. He hit 300 or more yards seven times last season, and five of those seven mm. were at home where he is playing this week against Atlanta. Now, I will say this. I just got an alert that um, surprised me. It wasn't. It was Amari Cooper expected to play. And I was like, wait, Amari Cooper was not? He was apparently he had an ankle injury, so that's good news. It's I, permanent. Yeah, he um, always has a little something. Yeah, I, I would still take the two hundred ninety nine and a half. I'll take the more than two hundred ninety nine and a half passing yards. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Gardner Minshew line this week. Two hundred forty point five passing yards, and I'm taking the less on that one. Tennessee is a tough defense that he gets to face this week. They have the ability to slow the game down with a big lead, if that's how the game script indeed goes. He only had 173 passing yards last week in the win. He averaged 233 last year, so I have him less than 240. Even in his one game against Tennessee last year, he was at 204. So I'm going to go less on Gardner. Yeah, and I've got Malcolm Brown, who I wanted to highlight here, 54 and a half rushing yards I'm taking the less. Uh, Cam Akers was still involved for the Rams last last week. Akers had 14 carries. This was, uh, and they're up against the Philadelphia Eagles. We saw the Washington run game, except for one breakout run for Gibson, was essentially completely shut down. Brown, uh, look, uh, up until last week, Brown had really never broken this mark in his career and he's still in the timeshare with acres we could see even more henderson this week as he returns to health so uh I, i'm i'm taking it i'm taking the less all right it's a good point mcveigh actually came out and said that the ball went to malcolm brown a little bit more than they had expected it to in week one he probably kind of earned it with the hot hand approach all right check out monkey knife fight and all the more or less games this week ballerspicks.com use the code ballers for a 100 percent deposit match up to 50 dollars that's ballerspicks.com. Play with us. A couple of quick uh, updates, injury updates. George Kittle, game time decision on Sundays uh, for Sunday's game against the Jets. Mm. If he's active, I will play George Kittle. No questions asked. I will 100% as well, but I you, you have to have a pivot option. And then uh, Matt Patricia said that Kenny Galladay will be, quote, pretty limited during Friday's practice. It's not trending in the right direction, but a limited practice would be better than no practice. If he is active, I will not play him. Yeah, I lean that way too. Hmm. Distraction, Galladay. Yeah, I mean it's what you saw. Bump, Mike, bumpy routes. Mike Evans, week one. It's not just a matter of whether they're active or not. It's whether they're fully healthy. All right, you can check out the Injury Blitz podcast later this afternoon from Matthew Betts over at jointhefoot.com, the Foot Clan premiere tier. But thank you for tuning in. Good luck this weekend. I'll see you on Sunday. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.